Hey guys, here's another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So uh, thanks to uh, viewer John A1160, I think. Um, he, uh, he made a comment on one of my previous videos about, um, you know, us being really old school using a wire wheel to clean hardware. And he, uh, he asked if, uh, if we'd ever use uh, ultrasonic cleaner before. And, you know, I kind of planted a seed in my head. So um, thanks to him for that. So um, Harbor Freight was having a sale this weekend. So I went ahead and, uh, and picked one up. It's a six liter and uh, did uh, a decent amount of research over the weekend as far as what cleaners would, uh, would kind of suit our need. Um, so one of the things I found was, um, and actually Harbor Freight also sells this, so I picked this up at the same time, is Evaporust. And uh, it does a really good job of removing rust. Um, I tried it on some hardware. Um, I think you can actually use it pretty well without an ultrasonic cleaner, but you may have to let parts soak more like overnight or, or many, many hours. Um, so I had some parts and I went ahead and, uh, and did them. So um, first off, what I did was in the, I guess what I'd call kind of the, the main part of the tank or the tank itself, actually, I put um, basically this kind of like knockoff simple green that, uh, that Harbor Freight sells. I put like a quarter of that and then the rest um, just regular water. And so initially I put all this hardware in that to basically the, the thought was to degrease it. And it, it did a, a really good job of degreasing it, but of course it was still rusty. And so then after that, I put it in, um, in a little uh, beaker or a little mason jar. And I think I put pure evapo rust in there. Um, and uh, it actually did a really good job of removing the rust um, for the most part. I probably could have left them in there longer. I think I left them in for a total of, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, they came out pretty good, but they didn't really have the, the sort of like white look um, that you get with the, the wire wheel, which is more like the head of this bolt that I actually hit with the wire wheel after um, using the uh, vapo, uh, vapo rust in the in the cleaner. This, this is really what kind of more what we're going for and this is what gives us a really nice finish when we have them zinc plated. So um, I may need to play around a little bit more and see if it's possible to get more of like this finish with uh, with some combination of these things. Um, what I did after that though with the vapo rust though is I took uh, pure concentrated uh, simple green or this knockoff and I actually put these pieces in that for I think um, I think it was just 15 or 20 minutes and so you can see the one uh, that had just been through evapo rust versus the ones here that went back in after the rust was all gone they went back into basically simple green so this actually to me looks pretty good and like this would probably give us a pretty nice um, coating uh, with zinc the only thing is, is none of these really did a great job of taking off paint. So we may still need to do that mechanically, although um, I'm probably gonna do some more research and see if there's something that we can put in our ultrasonic cleaner that'll, that'll help remove paint. Um, Cause a lot of this, a lot of times this hardware has paint on it. But uh, so yeah, anyway, um, it looks pretty promising as far as us being able to just you know, throw a bunch of hardware in this thing and, and kind of let it do its thing. Maybe even if we have to put it in a couple different uh, solutions, it, it, you know, it takes like a minute or so to, to change something from one solution to another, especially if you have used kind of like beakers like that where you're not constantly draining the whole thing. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to kind of play around, do some research, do some experimenting and, and find a combination that's good. It's really going to save us a ton of time because when we're doing a car, we're spending a lot of time standing here at this wire wheel. And a lot of times there's little areas that you can't reach with the wire wheel, especially on like little carburetor brackets and linkages and stuff like that. Um, you just really can't get everywhere. So anyway, I'll continue to post on this as I find out uh, more and, and kind of experiment on with it. But yeah, in the meantime, these are the two solutions I'm using, and this is the best result we've had so far, which which I think is pretty much there, except for um, some paint kind of hanging out on some hardware. So um, let's talk about what we actually did working on cars today. So Rafa went ahead and put the, the front suspension on the, whatever bus this is, this 59, I almost said 61, which would be this one. Um, 
Unfortunately, the steering box for this bus, which was rebuilt and then uh, we had it all painted and everything, um, the owner of the bus got the steering box, the rebuilt steering box from, from someone else, uh, a different uh, vendor, and it's really, really tight. Uh, we loosened up all the way the, the little adjuster. Those of you that are familiar with these uh, steering boxes will know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, Rafa removed it all the way just to be sure that it wasn't somehow binding the uh, the mechanism in there. And this thing, you can't turn it at all. Um, on the bottom, the pitman arm is not connected to anything. You should pretty much be able to take your fingers and spin this thing because there's nothing on the the uh, the steering box end of it that would prevent it from from moving. I mean. I've got pretty strong hands. I can't even budge this thing. Uh, I'm sure if you put a steering wheel on it, you could kind of gorilla it around, but that's not right. So unfortunately, um, we're going to have to see what we can do with the steering box. Um, hopefully the, uh, the, the shop that the, uh, the owner of the bus bought it from can take it to wherever he had it rebuilt. And I don't know, it's kind of a nightmare. I was hoping to get this bus fully on the ground, but looks like there's going to be a delay for that. Um, the other thing that happened today was our uh, paint and body guy that we use part-time went ahead and had him uh, start in on this Ghia. So those of you that remember this car, it had this really ugly patch of paint right back here where the paint was all kind of bubbling and flaking off. So he took that down to bare metal and, and smoothed everything out and uh, laid down a coat of primer. We have uh, paint that we had matched to this car. So um, he'll, he'll spray that and blend it and clear coat it in. It's going to look really good. And then for real, this car will be done. So uh, yeah, probably mid, mid or later this week, the owner will be able to come get it and get back to enjoying it. Um, as far as myself, other than, um, let me find my light. There we go. I'm back. Um, uh, I was really hoping to to do all the undercoating stuff on this today, but I can't because I can't move it. There's a bus still in the way. Uh, so I went ahead and started filling in some more holes um, before I was focused on the ones that were kind of on the fender wells. So here and here and there, because I wanted to do the undercoating under there. There was some in the, uh, basically in the, what would be the da under dash area from inside the car. So I went ahead and filled those in today. There was a huge one there, probably about a, I don't know, at least two inch hole. There was another probably inch or so hole there. And then there, there was just a hole where somebody had uh, screwed something in with a sheet metal screw. So I went ahead and patched those up because they they need to be patched eventually anyway. So yeah, accomplished a little bit on this car today. Not a lot because I was kind of busy dealing with other, uh, other things and um, playing around with the ultrasonic cleaner some and uh, talking to customers and it was kind of one of those days where didn't have as much time to do actual work as I would have liked but somehow that's how it goes so I think that is it for today guys um, thanks for watching we'll see you again tomorrow have a good evening